I'm Linda. I'm Dan and this is What Is Music. Today we're going to show you how to score a film. But first, a brief history of film and music. Mm. You might think that film scores are as old as time, like popcorn, chop tops and cheap Tuesdays, but none of these things have been with film since the beginning. It helps to just remember how young the film industry is. It all started with the silent film era more than 100 years ago. It was hard to synchronise sound and pictures, so most film music had to be played live, in the theatre. If you went to see the latest Charlie Chaplin or Buster Keaton flick, you might see someone in the corner banging out a score on a piano or an organ to accompany the slapstick. But film technology quickly evolved, and by the 1930s, the soundtrack, literally a track of sound attached to the side of the celluloid, was here to stay. It was the golden age of Hollywood. Think big movies like Gone with the Wind and Casablanca. He's looking at you, kid. Movie production was booming, so much so that the bigger studios kept full orchestras on staff to meet their music needs. These scores were classical, lush, big and romantic. This era marked the introduction of leitmotif to cinema. Which is basically a fancy German way of saying that movies started to have reoccurring themes. And that's not where the Teutonic influence stops. In fact, early Hollywood film music was heavily influenced by composers who fled the Nazis. Nazis. I hate these guys. And while music always aided in storytelling, these scores were really beating you over the head with it. This was the norm until the 50s and 60s, when filmmakers began to shy away from the boldness and extravagance of a full orchestra, instead favouring smaller ensembles with more contemporary sounds. Ennio Morricone brought the electric guitar to the Western and incorporated unexpected sounds like the crack of whips and choral grunts. Also during this time, filmmakers started using popular music in their scores. Artists like Bob Dylan, Joni Mitchell, Simon and Garfunkel, and of course, the king of song, Burt Bacharach. By the late 70s, the orchestral score was primed for its inevitable return with a vengeance. Enter John Williams. Your hero. Everyone's hero. Oh. Williams and his contemporaries were the kids who grew up with golden era orchestral scores and they were going to bring them back. I'm Batman. Better than ever. These fresh young composers picked up where the experts of old left off, crafting with finesse. They're quicker and compact, but just as bombastic. In the age of summer blockbusters and for an audience with an increasingly shorter attention span, this group of composers managed to capture that old Hollywood sound and modernise it. But by the 80s, like pop music, Hollywood could not escape the impact of synthesizers. With horror and sci-fi film composers like Vangelis in Blade Runner and John Carpenter's Halloween, electronic scores ushered a new age of film music. Enter camera left Hans Zimmer. The man who defines the cinematic sound of today. Season up! Also, he can compose lush scores. Remember. But like, why would you do that when you can just go... 
Today's scores take the thematic shorthand of the 70s and shortens it even more. With the flexibility of technology and wide variety of sounds and textures, film music in this age is more than ever about creating mood, tone and ambience, rather than commenting directly on the on-screen action. Dan, it is time for us to show how to score a film. Since you are the composer, you're going to have to compose. All right, yeah, and I guess because you're really good at pretending to do work, then I guess you can uh, do the acting. <laughs> Deal. To get that old-timey, kitschy sound, you have to look at the music that was popular in the 1900s, the 1910s, the 1920s. You know, early jazz, ragtime, stride piano, that kind of thing. Without music, films are a little bit ghostly, a little bit, you know, weird and threatening and unsettling. Music grounds it and it gives it emotion and drama and sort of cues the audience into what's going on in the scene. People already saw the amazing potential here. And so next up came, of course, the golden age of Hollywood. Give up that maiden coffee, you ruffian. It's my coffee. <laughs> it has been too long, my love. For this scene, I'm trying to emulate the sound of old Hollywood with composers like Max Steiner and Eric Korngold who brought the Viennese European tradition to America. So I'm working within Logic, which is the software that I use to make music. I'm using a whole bunch of software synths to create the sound of a Hollywood orchestra. Here in the first eight or so seconds, you've got your main theme. Then you've got the gesture towards light motif when Robin Hood turns up. You've got those little brass fanfares that sort of say, hey, here's the hero. One of the biggest hallmarks of this era of film music was Mickey Mousing. So basically copying and sort of adding an exclamation point over the action on screen. So when Robin Hood swings down, we get the woodwinds falling, basically repeating the same motion. Of course, the other thing in this era is with synchronised sound, you've got dialogue to contend with too. So that's a tricky thing to find a balance for where I'm pulling back with smaller, more delicate instruments that underpins dialogue. Give up that maiden coffee, you ruffian. It's my coffee. And then you've got melodrama, and that comes from the strings. And this is also where the melody gets really beefed up. It sort of develops at its most in this sequence and really gives you that lush, you know, pulling at the heartstrings, we're coming to an end feeling. Although music for westerns began very much in the Hollywood orchestral tradition, by the time you get to the 1960s and 70s, composers like Ennio Morricone had really changed things. 
Morricone used soundscapes and lots of musical textures rather than specific themes or tying the music in with the on-screen action. And that's really what I've tried to do here, is creating, you know, a soundscape with lots of different instruments. The first is this thud, which is just a sample of somebody whacking the side of a guitar. And then you get the guitar itself in on the top, which is just that classic spaghetti western vibe. Then a kind of flute that goes up and then falls down, then eventually all building up to when the full orchestra enters. There we start to get a sense of the chord progression, a bit more movement, there's a snare drum, there's a lot of sort of forwards momentum going on. Then finally we have a trumpet that plays a bit of melody here. Before being joined by the guitar. So it's almost there, it just needs a little bit of acoustic guitar just to nail that spaghetti western sound. downward facing dog, you stole our sacred drink. Emulating John Williams almost killed me. It was so, so difficult. For a minute worth of music, you've got five time signature changes and six tempo changes, and I don't even know how many key changes. I can't count them. So you can see how complex this is, just in terms of the layers of instruments going on here. The music has to tie so closely with the on-screen action. So, I mean, the first thing I started with here was the tempo you know, ensuring that the beat of every scene tied in perfectly with what I was doing with the music. It's also about adding in melodic ideas, but not fully fleshed out themes. The genius of John Williams is that he gives you just enough to know that there's something melodic happening. So right at the start, I actually have a kind of secondary theme for the chalice, which I had in my mind developed out as something, you know, sort of a proper full theme. But because it's implemented into the action, I had to forego the full playing of the theme and actually have it shift chromatically upwards to build the tension. So instead, it sounds like this. Get in there and get what we need. croissant man I got the butter what is music what is music The thing that I would say about this style of music overall is that it's also kind of closer to sound design than it is to traditional musical composition. So we've got a whole bunch of synths here and then we've got a whole bunch of effects that are basically, you know, what a sound designer would normally do. They're whooshes, they're builds, they're the kind of, you know, bass hits that you would see in a trailer that add to the drama and the power of the scene but aren't strictly musical effects. The other thing that you'll notice, woodwinds have completely disappeared. It's just strings, percussion, and brass. 
And that's the kind of Hans Zimmer sound. There's also not really any melody across this whole composition. In the same way as Morricone was building towards kind of sound and texture and landscape, that's definitely what Zimmer is doing here. It's about the drama of the scene. And getting that signature boom sound is just as easy as chucking in some low brass. Making this kind of music is really easy. I just need to hold down a key and the rhythm is played for me. Drums and percussion. It's just one key. And as you can see, my score for this is really a lot simpler than the one where I was trying to emulate John Williams. And this is kind of the future of film music, I think. It's easy to make on computers, it's cheap, it's quick, and it's quite stylish. It's what people want to hear today. And so that's how you score a film, or five films. Well done. Well done you too, that was some amazing acting. <laughs> It's pretty incredible to see how film scores have evolved and even just film in itself over the last century. And as we've seen in previous episodes, when music is combined with a really strong image, that impact is just so much more powerful. It has been very lovely making cinematic magic with you, Dan. Likewise. And now can I have some popcorn? Yeah, hold back. Okay. Mm -hmm. Further. Uh. What's your fave film score? Tell us below. And subscribe and ding that bell if you love Choc Tops. And if you don't, who are you? <laughs> <laughs>